What are your thoughts about the role real time is playing in the types of experiments you guys and creations you guys are doing? Well, I mean, I was co-founder of ILMX Lab, but I'm at Magic Leap now, okay. right? So uh, we founded X Lab to, you know, pursue exactly what we were, I was just talking about. That right. was the sort of the mission at the at, um, to be able to do cinematic fidelity real time is one of the goals, but also to explore new form, right? So if we're gonna make a world, a universe, and we were lucky uh, when I was there at Lucasfilm, we were lucky to have uh, Star Wars as a universe to draw from. Uh, one thing that I would mention that's probably less known is that um, ILMX Lab uh, was um, supported greatly by the writing group for Lucasfilm, uh, the story group. So it's like the most advanced graphics division in all of Lucasfilm and ILM, you know, advanced in terms of new, you know, real time. But in fact, actually tethered directly to the story group, which is very interesting. So our experiments, not all of them, some of them were quite technical, um, but some of the experiments really were about, you know, the nature of experience, the nature of universe, what it's like to be in an inside of an immersive destination. You could, um, you know, the I, the, there's a lot of ways you can sort of approach um, what, where is your center point when you're thinking about what the uh, experience could be and often, and it had a lot to do with being connected to story. The destination actually, seen, in terms of virtual reality, the destination uh, was the best center point because the destination, if we chose something from the Star Wars universe, it has a history, it has a future, it has, you know, uh, the trajectories of characters cutting across it through the history of the lore of that particular destination. It gives you this incredible foresight about what to put into the destination, into the into the container that you ask people to to stand inside. And then you're, you know, the nature of the experiments are like, okay, well, in what situation do you want to place the participant? Not the user, which is a very sterile word that has come out of the tech sector, but the participant, right? Or the visitor, right? The visitor of the destination. So X Lab uh, did and has, you know, is still doing various experiments that have to do with that. Uh, and not just virtual reality, other things as well. But um, at this point, you know, for me, uh, you know, I want to be working inside of mediums that have uh, social um, foundations to them, like the ability of people to be experiencing things together uh, in both, not both, but in all these immersive mediums, it's hard sometimes to uh, understand structured story. It's almost a worth, not, it's not worth um, the sort of anxiety <laughs> that, you know, people trying to figure out what that is because like reality, um, I think it's more a place to sort of derive, ex to, to have experiences from which you could potentially take out and forge story from. So, for example, let's say I'm a writer and I've written a, a book, some, you know, fictitious universe or storyline, characters, all this, right? Um, you know, but I'm a real person. I'm a, I'm a writer, but I'm a real person. I'm having a real life. I have a real family, real childhood, real relationships. I've witnessed things through my whole life. I'm paying attention to things happening in the world. Right? That is all source material that's gone in here and has somehow translated through metaphor right, into now a storyline right, and a new world. Right? But really a lot of that is represent, it's metaphoric and it's representative of things you know, that are, I'm actually borrowing from reality. And I think that VR and mixed reality experiences I mean, we're talking about the creative side now, but um, I think VR and MR experiences could be, again, the source, right? You step into simulation, 
you're, you're brought into very fascinating situations. You do what you choose to do, and if you're with other people now, it's the, the sort of relationship of you with they as you're in these situations, right? There's two ways you can look at story. Story could be the byproduct of your total experience in that simulation, right? That is now the story, how you engaged in what was presented to you. That part is the story. Another story could be that which you take out and process and then turn into something else if you are a creator. So I think it's about world building and, and creating really fascinating simulations for humans to step into and to take from and not get too hung up about how to be how to like, you know, cope with the fact that we've jettisoned editorial and cinematography as two two primary languages of storytellers that are fundamental at a core level. They're like intuitive languages that uh, you don't even need to te teach a child, right? So you can take a child and you can put a child in front of an animated film or a movie, what have you, and you don't have to explain editing at all, right? They can see cuts and dis dis disruptions in time and like changes of angles. You don't have to say anything to them and they can walk away and be able to intuit all of that, all of the message and the story and everything that's going on with no, with no, um, no, no um, education ahead. So that makes it a very, very powerful language. Cinematography and editing, those two things, a really powerful language. And we can't discount the, uh, the absence of those things in immersive, right? So immersive is not necessarily we haven't figured out the language, right? What is the grammar and the language that works? And all uh, where I'm at at the moment is that um, it's going to take so long that we'll, it'll be a long time before we understand fully what the. But the one thing that I do know is that you can you can lead people into these into simulations of all sorts, and they'll have the experience they have, and that in and of itself is a story of that experience. Of, of, so. I'm that far with it.